I think um, there are definitely places around the world where these sorts of facilities just don't exist. Um, for example, the United Kingdom, UK, um, where there's very few choices for a stranded animal like Chester or, or Jack or, or Levi. Um, and essentially it's push them back or, or euthanize. And we know that pushing back an animal that can't survive at sea, um, that has stranded because of illness, because of some problem, um, some debilitation, pushing that animal back is, is not a viable solution. Um, euthanizing an animal um, that, that can't, you know, for which there's no other option, um, to me is also uh, an incredibly lost opportunity. I think we as humans uh, have affected our environment so significantly, so tremendously, and, and that effect is so widespread. I mean, even here in, in coastal BC, um, we've got shipping noise. Uh, we've just had reports of a, of a gray whale being hit by a boat. Um, we, you know, there's so many challenges these animals face that when there is a stranded animal, we kind of now owe the rest of the world. We owe the other species that live on this planet and share this planet with us. We owe them something. Um, and that's that ability to help them when in their time of need. Because as we're increasingly finding out, a lot of our strandings, not all, but a lot of our strandings are either directly or indirectly due to human activity. And we know humans affect the planet, and you can talk and complain about there not being climate change, but most people think there is, and most people think that there are a lot of humans, and probably more humans than there should have been on this planet, and that we affect things, whether it's tossing garbage into inappropriate places, or um, or, or you, you know, or the way we use um, our boats or cars or whatever. We're here, we're part of the planet, but we're also affecting the planet. And we owe it to all those other things that share this planet um, to do our best for them. Um, and whether that's you know, bringing an animal into a rehabilitation program, whether it's supporting wildlife research, whether it's um, supporting conservation efforts and, and reintroducing species or, or, um, or limiting or finding out ways to limit how we've negatively affected um, everything else in this world. We need to do that and, and rehabilitating a stranded cetacean offers the opportunity not just for animal welfare and, and doing what's best for that individual and, and trying to, to give back to the world in a little bit but it provides this incredible opportunity to learn more about that species. E even here we've learned more about the diseases that affect our local species by running a rehabilitation program, um, by training others who are gonna be the next heroes um, uh, out there, that they're gonna start the next rehabilitation program, that are gonna carry the torch further into the future, by inspiring the young people and kids who, who come here to, to pursue those goals. Um, those are important things that that education and that engagement and that research for, that gets that happens with every individual stranded animal or every animal that lives here at the aquarium is so vital and uh, at the same time it absolutely is a wonderful thing to give back a little bit and and to have an animal's best interests at heart when you run a rescue program and you have a successful release but it's not the only thing that happens with these animals it's a great thing it's a personal thing that I love of course and I'm a huge motivator for individuals but there's so much more to it and I think people are starting to understand that